So the big question is this. How do aspiring real estate investors like us escape from the rat race and build real wealth and freedom without access to millions of dollars in investment capital and start to live the life that we know we deserve? This is the question, and this podcast will give you the answer. My name is Zach Childers, and welcome to Real Estate Investing Talk Show. So our discussion today is really about what that looks like working directly with an agent and what it is they look for and what it is you should be looking for um, when you're out there looking for an agent. Or one of the things I definitely want to talk to you about is when an investor wears both hats, an Mm -hmm. investor hat and an agent hat, and what should they be looking for when it comes to hanging their license? And so I want to talk about that as well. But I want to introduce and let Tim introduce himself, really. But Tim, tell them who you are, tell them what you do, how long you've been doing it, and so forth. Sure. Uh, My name is Tim Knox, uh, born and raised here in Madison, Alabama. Uh, I am a Uh, I guess you could call a serial entrepreneur. I've had my own business for about 30 years here. And uh, for the last couple of years, that business has been real estate. And so uh, with a partner, we started a company called Revolved Realty. Uh, We cover all of North Alabama. We are a flat fee listing company. Flat fee. Flat fee listing company. Um, And we've been uh, just growing like wildfire. We're uh, going on about a year and a half old. We've got, I think, 19 uh, agents in two offices. And we work with... Buyers, sellers, investors, builders, you name it, we work with them. You work with them. Mm -hmm. And that's important for you guys to understand because when we've we've talked about this a lot, like building your power team. Who needs to be on your power team? And one of the questions we get all the time is, is, hence why we did the show, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) is what type of agent do you need on your team? Like what type of agent, you know, should you be interviewing or qualifying to help you grow your business? And Tim hit it perfect is, you know, when when you've got somebody that understands builders, Mm -hmm. not just builders, but understands investors, but is an investor yourself, family is investors, your daughter's an investor, been on HGTV, had the show. Um, uh, That was a plug for Chelsea. (laughs) <laughs> Fixing to flip on HGTV. <laughs> on HGTV. Yeah. He's a proud father. I am very proud. <laughs> <laughs> I would be too. <laughs> they they did not let me on the show, but <laughs> and I wonder why. <laughs> I was I was the gopher, but I got, gopher. I got no credit. You got whatsoever. no got no airtime. <laughs> None. <laughs> not even when you brought coffee to the producer. No, I was told uh, dad get off the set. Oh really? Mm-hmm. That is so funny. She knew so, you'd steal the limelight. Uh pretty much. <laughs> it's kind of a, it's kind of a gimme. <laughs> so anyways back to the point is is that when you've got an agent that knows all those worlds plus they understand the retail buyer right that's that's a uh, that's really a mashup of what you're looking for when you've got somebody that understands the whole aspect of it mm-hmm. from what an investor's mindset is to knowing what that investor is trying to do with that property to the point of taking that property and then knowing what the end buyer is looking for you really got kind of like the perfect storm with an agent well you, you do and that's why it's really important that you you pick your agent wisely. Yes, because and we're going to talk about that. Yeah, not not all not all agents are, are equal. well versed. Well, I don't <laughs> want to say equal, uh, but but not all know the investment background or the flipping or very and, true. You know, especially the new agents, they're more focused on just residential sales. Yeah, they want listings. Exactly. They yeah. just want listings. The yep. More listings we get, the more properties, or I should say, the more opportunity in theory that we'll have. Yep. In theory, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. a good one. But my first question is this, Tim. When we're looking, my question that I wrote down was the best practice when working with an investor, meaning if someone is watching this and they're an agent, because we get a lot of agents that are thinking mm-hmm. about becoming investors, what's, what is some of the best practice for an agent when they're working with an investor? It's a great question. I think if you're an agent who's going to work with an investor, number one, you've got to know how it works. The, how the imp- entire investment process works right. because it's very different from working with an investor and just working for someone that you're trying to find a house for. Right, right. So what, what I always try to do is have a conversation with that investor because I want to get to know you. Yep. I want to know what your goals are. I want to know how much money you have to invest. Big question. Very important. It's one of the things where whether I'm working with an investor or a buyer, right. I want to know how much you can buy. Right. Okay, because that is going to determine what I bring to you. Well, and that's a very important question, too, because there's a lot of 
new investors coming into the market right now. Every day. Every day. They're mm -hmm. all just like you're probably seeing with agents. Like mm -hmm. I think what last month, like seventy agents. You know, we yeah, we we've like we've got something like thirty two hundred here in Madison County. Whew, that's a lot. Uh, which in you know New York they've got ninety thousand, so it's not well, tremendous, good but thing it's a we different don't live market. In New York. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> right. Yeah. But there's a lot of new investors coming in, and, and mm -hmm. sometimes they're directed wrong. They're told, hey, go find an agent, go find a deal. But they haven't even right. done the primary things, right. like where's their money coming from? Can they buy? Are mm -hmm. they qualified? Mm -hmm. Are they using bank loans or asset-based lenders? Yep. Which for you, from what, you're just, what you just said was, is I need to know how much money they're working with. Well, I, I do. I need to know if they have money, yeah. how much money they have. If they don't have money, do they have a way to get money? Can I help them get right. money? Because I work with investors who all they want to do is just lend money yep. to other investors. Yep. So I think the key there is before you can honestly say you are a real estate investor, yep. you need to learn what that means and how to do it. Correct. Yep. Like not just say I'm an investor because I went to a weekend seminar. I, you know what? I've got uh, 20000 in savings. I'm an investor. Yeah. No, and you're not. You're someone who's going to lose twenty thousand. Right, because one, yeah. you don't have the education. Two, right. you don't know how to build the relationships. Correct. Because it, it really works both ways. So that an investor isn't wasting an agent's time, mm -hmm. and an agent isn't wasting the investor's right. time. They need to be on the same. I say it like this all the time. In any new relationship, whether it's business or personal. You got to talk about the divorce first. <laughs> you do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's and a like, hard conversation. At, at least keep it in mind. <laughs> right. Yeah. But you know, like I, I need to be able, if I'm going to sit down with an agent, I don't want it to be cupcakes and sunshines. I mm -hmm. want to say, what is it you need me to have prepared to work with you? And if I don't, then we're not going to mm -hmm. work together anymore. Right. Yep. That's that divorce I'm talking mm -hmm. about, like having that conversation so that you know ahead of time what they expect from you and what you expect from them. Yeah. And, and a really good point there is, I don't care if you're the investor or the agent, it's a relationship where you work together. True. I know a lot of investors who, who just say, I've got the money, you go do everything yeah. for me. That's their level of involvement. Right. I know other investors who want to be involved every step of the way. Which is a little too much. It, it can be, yeah. yeah so I, I think agree. you need to figure out what that balance is. But if you're an investor, you need an agent you can trust to work on your behalf and do the best job they can. Yep. Because if that trust isn't there, the relationship's not gonna last. I agree with that. And, and talking about that is like, you know, I, I've always had the theory that my agent is part of my team. Correct, yeah. It is absolutely yeah. part of my team. That's why I don't go out and get my license. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm an investor, I raise money, I do marketing, I find deals. Everything that an agent should do is what my agent partner does. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I never do is try to beat my agent down on their points. Uh, yeah. And I hear it over and over. Oh, just go to your agent. Tell them to take less. Tell them to take... But why? Yeah. Like that's killing that relationship yeah. because now they look at you as somebody who doesn't see the value in what they're bringing to the table. Yeah, and well, what it does is it kind of degrades the whole relationship. It, absolutely. You know, if, if you're hiring me or if I'm working for you, finding you investments, I should get paid for it. Right. And I shouldn't have to discount my service because you're too cheap to, right. to cough up the investment. Or you ran your numbers wrong and you're not going to make as much as you thought you were going right. to make. So now you want to take it out of my pocket. Exactly. Yeah. The, I don't agree with yeah. that. So yep. I don't agree with that. It's, it's a respect factor. Hey, so anyways, let's move on now. So best practices for a investor working with an agent is really some of the things we talked about already, mm -hmm. like not trying to beat them up over their points. But other than that, it's coming prepared. Well, well, it really is. And, he, and here's the thing, and you and I have talked about this a lot, is if I'm going to represent you, if I'm going to work for you, again, I need to know you. Yep. I need to know your goals. I need to know what you've got in your back pocket that I've got to work with. And then I've got to go find deals that fit that mold. Right. I should not be bringing you deals that are outside of your comfort zone, right. your finances, what have you. Yep. You know, if you tell me, look, I'm only interested in single family, fix and flips. This if price I'm range, in this price range, if I start bringing you multifamily or apartments, You're wasting time. I'm wasting your time. Basically, if your agent does that, again, it goes back to respect. Yep. They're not respecting you. They just want that commission. Yes, and they're just trying to throw anything. Anything at you. that you'll buy, and that also goes back to the, their their level, the investors' level of understanding what they can do. I call mm -hmm. it getting realistic, mm -hmm. right? Because sometimes I'll even my students, I'll see them bring on to the the live show, bring questions, and like, 
hey, my agent brought me this $1.6 million deal. It's worth 2.5 and it's not selling. Well, it's not worth 1.6 right. yeah. <laughs> if it's yeah. not selling. Yeah, number, numbers are screwed there but a little bit. Yeah. My very next question is, is, okay, well, let's talk about this. Can you buy a $1.6 million property? Do you have the resources? Do right. you have the connections? Do you have the network? Yeah. Do you have the contractors that can, because a contractor to remodel a $1.6 million house is much different than a contractor to remodel $125,000. Yep. It house. is, yeah. And, and then they start thinking, they're like, oh, I didn't think, but there again, that goes back yeah. to the agent and the investor mm -hmm. not knowing where they stand. And see, here's a mistake a lot of, I've seen new investors make, is they rely too much on the agent. Ah, I agree. And they, agree. they believe whatever that agent tells them is yeah. gospel. And a lot of times, it's not the agent being unscrupulous or, or what yeah. have you. It is a lack of knowledge on both parts. I agree. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen new investors and new agents team up and it's it's disaster because there's no there's no experience there's no real worldly right. stuff going experience, on there. Experience, yep. great topic right yep. there because we talk about it all the time in the education side, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you're going to learn, you need to be learning whether that's w learning from an agent or learning from someone who's been investing, mm -hmm. who's got time in, who's got mm -hmm. history in, who's got longevity, right? Right. Um, so that's a good one. All right, let's move on to the next question. What should an investor be looking for when they're out there, whether our market or any market across the US, what should they be looking for when they're trying to find an agent to be part of their team? Another great question. You do this. You're really good at this. <laughs> this is really good. I, I think, again, it goes back to number one is compatibility. How are we going to get along? You right. and I would work together very well right. because our personalities are very well, are very uh, uh, in sync, if yep. you will. If you're an investor who has a very guarded approach, you're very cautious, you do not want this aggressive dynamo agent right. uh, because it's just a, a bad match. Well, yeah, so, you would, you'd be questioning it. Like, well, well, you would. And again, you look at the motives on, on each right. party. But to me, it's about compatibility. It's about making sure, number one, the personalities sync, the goals sync, the financials sync. Um, you know, th there's an agent or two or three or five on every street corner. That's so true. Picking that's one true. that is best for you yep. is really, and that's why you see most investors, they have got the same agent they've used forever. Uh, yeah, yeah. And and that's because you build that relationship. You and they're, almost train each other. Well, you do. And yeah. there is that initial spark. And I think the one thing that, I'm an old entrepreneur, so whenever I approach a relationship like this, it's really from not only a personal standpoint, but a business standpoint. Right. How are we going to get along as business partners? That's because that's true. a very big, yeah. because you introduce money into any situation and any relationship, it changes the dynamic. That's true. So if you are an investor looking for a realtor, interview them. Yeah. Just like you would interview anyone else to represent you or for a job, What what is their experience? Uh, have they done investing on their own? What kind of investment deals have they done? You know, everybody has to start somewhere, right. but you know, everybody doesn't want you to be the first deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. But, uh, but again, it goes into what's that experience, what's that trust. It's better if the agent has experience as an investor himself and vice versa. True. You don't see that a lot, well, but it they is know, better. They know what to look for. Mm -hmm. Because I can't tell you how many times I, I, I get agents all the time mm -hmm. that want to work with me. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, Zach, I want to work with you. I want to find you deals. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, well, go find me some deals. Well, see, that's the thing. They will then go look in the MLS. Yes. <laughs> and they're like, oh, there, there must be nuggets of gold. Yeah. In the MLS, or then right? they start bringing me deals and I'm running the numbers. Well, and I'm like, I'm going to lose 40 yeah, grand on I this I mean, the, the truth of the matter is the the best deals never hit the MLS. That's, that's very true. They, they, uh, most of them never hit being represented by an agent. That's true. So you need an agent that can ferret the, I mean, whether it's riding up and down the roads or what have you, you need an agent that's not going to just do what every other agent does. That's true. Because if that's the case, they're not going to bring well, you those deals. And you, that's such a good topic you say, because, you know, if I look back at, let's say the last 20 rehabs I've done, I want to say three of them we got off the MLS. Mm-hmm. I mean, 17 of them were all through network, pocket listings, other sources mm -hmm. yeah. of, of opportunity. Yeah. But it also has something to reflect on what we're talking about. I, I did a market overview show yesterday, and we were talking about um, what the average months of inventory are in our area. And right mm -hmm. now we're hovering at four months. Mm -hmm. And that's actually the national average. Mm -hmm. It's been our national average for as long as I can remember. But when you start getting like three months of inventory, two months, 
you're not, you're wasting time as right. an investor on yeah. the MLS. When you see markets that are holding six months, seven months of inventory, mm -hmm. then yeah, there might be some opportunities on the MLS, mm -hmm. but typically those are during times when people stop buying. Well, if, if, if it's in the MLS, it's already too much. <laughs> you know what I mean? There, there's already uh, the commissions and everything built in. You're going to overpay. Yeah, that's yeah. why most of the best deals, yeah. whether it's from wholesalers or what have yeah. you, are from you know getting in the car, riding around, yeah. networking, marketing. that sort of thing, marketing. Um, you know, I, I'm a you know me, I'm a big believer in marketing. I mean, yeah. I mean, next to you, I'm probably on Facebook more than anybody I know, <laughs> and it's all marketing, but. It, when you get to the point where people are bringing you the deals rather mm -hmm. than you having to go out and find them, that's when you can make the money. I agree with you on that. I, yeah. And I say it all the time. Like, you know, it takes, especially when you're first starting out. So if you're watching this and you're brand new and, and you're hearing what we're saying and you're like going, oh my gosh, like, where am I going? <laughs> Look, networking is so powerful. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, it's always about being out there. You can't build a business sitting at home behind a computer. You cannot. Unless you want to do internet based business or drop shipping. But in real estate, it's really about getting out doing this. It is. You it's can a, shake my hand. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you were doing this. So. <laughs> Voila. Ah, I got you. <laughs> it's yeah. about getting out, shaking hands and kissing mm -hmm. babies. Yeah. Um, and so, but it takes time for that network to develop. And it it's does. about being yeah. consistent, getting yeah. your face out there, letting people know. I mean, I mean, you know, it's a good and it's a bad thing. Um, and I know both sides of it. I mean, when you put your face out there too much, then people either see you good or some can say, oh, you're that guy that's everywhere. Yeah. You know, they don't they don't like that you're a marketer. They don't like that you're you're good at what you do because in their world, they don't see a value in it. Mm -hmm. In our world, there's huge value in yeah. that. Yeah. That's how we put the food on our table yeah. is getting the message out. Oh, I, I had a guy tell me, well, you're, you're on Facebook all the time. And I'm like, Thank you for noticing. Thank you for That's noticing. That's why I do it. My head is on the side of my car. It's this big. You know big, what you know? it is. Yeah. <laughs> it, it makes it easy to find your car in the That's parking right. lot. Was... Right <laughs> <laughs> oh, that must be mine. There, there I am. Yeah. You know what? That's funny. You say that. I know we're we're we're, we're looping around here, but um, so I read a post the other day, and it was such a well written post, and it was about a lady talking about one of her friends who's an entrepreneur, and has an online business with well, just a widget, uh, mm -hmm. nothing in particular. But she was talking about how like these big companies out here get massive exposure through Facebook because people share and like and repost their mm -hmm. stuff, right. but they're global companies, but yet they won't do the same thing for their friend who's right. a realtor or a business when that's the one that we should be supporting more than anything. Mm -hmm. is like, hey, here's somebody we knew, know that's getting started with a business. Like, let's share and let's post and let's help this person get their message out, yeah. which goes back to what you're saying. Right? Yeah, it, it's it's all about marketing. Facebook has made marketing so much easier oh, I know. than it and used to be. YouTube is great. Um, it, I, I talk to folks, new agents all the time, though. They're like, I don't want to be obnoxious. Yeah. You know, I don't want anybody to know, you know, and I'm like, well, yeah. keep your day job right. because you are going to fail miserably <laughs> right. in this business. And, and, and you know this, I always say that I, I always go by the, the motto, the loudest kid in class gets the most attention. That's right. It may not be good attention, That's but right. it's attention. But you're getting it. And it works really well. Yeah, I was yeah. that guy. No, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, talking about that, it's like um, the squeaky wheel, you know, gets mm -hmm. the oil, but Let's talk about something else. Okay. And, and this might be a touchy subject for some agents out there, but I'm going to throw it out there is um, what bothers you the most about investors? Like when an investor is saying, hey, Tim, hey, Tim, hey, Tim, I'm an investor. I'm going to buy some deals. Right. Hey, Tim, hey, Tim. What is it that bothers you the most when that investor comes or we'll call them an investor and you don't know them and they're trying to get you to work with them. What mm -hmm. bothers you the most? The, or maybe the, even an investor that you know out there. You don't have to say any names. Uh, no, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the thing that bothers me the most, and we've already talked about this, is the, the lack of preparedness. Okay. You know, when I have someone who wants to meet with me to talk about being an investor, and the very first question out of their mouth is, can you, can you show me how to get some money? Can you show me how to use other people's money, the OPM? They're coming to you They're saying, coming to me, me money. going, and here's, and here's their thinking, Tim, if you will go out or teach me how to use other people's money to finance these deals, I'll let you be the agent. Oh my gosh. I get that more than more. So that's, that's <laughs> the big thing. Again, it goes back to people who 
they they see a TV show yeah. or they watch a seminar or yeah. whatever, and they want to be an agent. Yeah. And the first thing they do is realize, okay, I've got to use other people's money, yeah. which should be really easy because I see all these guys yeah. on the internet doing it. So let me tell you what bothers me the most. Okay, a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole list. <laughs> it is a whole list yeah. of my God. Yeah. I got a few pet peeves out there. <laughs> but here's what bothers me the most about investors working with agents. Because like you said, I appreciate my agents. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have a quite a, not, I have probably a core of agents I work with, but I have one primary agent. And this is something that always bothers me. I'm gonna talk about two things. Number one is this, is that when someone goes out and, and finds an agent, they need to understand if you're working with that agent and you're saying, look, set up all these automated searches on the MLS for me. These are the areas I want to mm -hmm. buy in. This is the price range. This is what I'm looking for. That's your agent. Mm -hmm. You can't go to five other agents and say, oh yeah, find stuff on the MLS for me because yeah. you already have an agent yep. doing that. Mm -hmm. And so I, it bothers me and I say, look, you've got to cultivate that with that agent. You got to build that relationship. You got to put some time into right. it to grow it. Um, I, one of the guys I work with real close, I've been working with him for almost 10 years. But when we first started out, we butted heads, mm -hmm. you know, cause I was bringing some very creative mm -hmm. stuff to the table <laughs> and, um, and he just wasn't too sure about it. But I work with so many agents in this market but my conversation with them is this. Look, I already have a primary agent. I don't need you searching the MLS for me. But if you get something that needs to sell quickly, call me before you list it. Right. That's that relationship, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So you can have as many of them as you want, but don't have five agents all doing the same searches yeah. on the MLS for you. Yeah. It kills the relationship. The second thing that bothers me with investors working with agents is just like what we talked about earlier, how they look at them. They don't look at them as an asset or a team. They look at them as an expense and how mm -hmm. can I cut it or how can I get them out of this or how is this or how is that? Or one that even gets me more than anything is when they want to sell a property quickly, there's only so much that agent can do when True. it comes to marketing based on the Department of Real Estate and what they'll let them do. Right. Um, and so if you want all this extra stuff, you need to help them. You need to get out there and do it. Like yep. I can put bandit signs all over a market where my agent can't do that. Right. Right. Well, get out there and help that agent sell the property. Mm -hmm. And so those are some of my things and I've got more. Yeah. Right? And, and I agree. Every, every one of those are, are valid points. And again, it comes back to that relationship working together having one common goal. Again, it really is a partnership. It is. But if you see it as, if I'm the agent and I see you just as a source of, of income for me, and you're the investor and you see me as just Joe Schmo out trying an to find expense. you property. Yeah, uh, an expense, it's in the long term. There is no long term, no it's not gonna work out. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a cut and burn quickly. Yep. And this and the third thing, like I told you I was gonna slow down. It's gonna be a long show. <laughs> <laughs> the third thing is is when an, an investor is not really prepared to work with an agent. One you we talked about it mm -hmm. a few times financially. Mm -hmm. But the other one is is when they're out just looking at houses and saying, Hey, give me a CMA report. Go get a hey, give me a CMA, give yeah. me a CMA, give me and they're not buying anything. Right. They're yeah, just they're constantly wasting your time. Build, getting you to send these CMA reports. And eventually what happens, guys, is that agent does not see you as the real thing. Mm -hmm. And then they start saying, you know what? I'm not going to return their phone calls. I'm not going to return their emails because it's just a waste of time. Yep. I, I agree. And I, I think a lot of it has to do with how quickly you can find a deal, do a deal and get paid a phone. Move a fast deal. on it. You got to move fast. If, if you're working with an investor, uh, you need to bring them a deal as quickly as you can. Yeah. That needs to be a valid yeah, deal. Right. And if you're an investor, you need to get involved in, and take a look at yep. it and listen. And that's a seasoned investor that that's knows it. it. Yeah. That's funny. Me and Steve were talking yesterday and Steve said something that I took it as a compliment because he said, you know, one thing I've noticed working with you, Zach, over the years is if I bring you something and you want it, you don't wait. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll take this, get the contract together. Yep. Like he's like, Zach, within three minutes, I know whether or not you're going to do the deal or not. Yep. So listen, let's talk about this real quick. Mm -hmm. Explain to us what your brokerage really is. Mm -hmm. When you say a flat fee broker, talk more about that because here's why. In, in a lot of the investor community, when we hear flat fee, we think $100, mm -hmm. they're going to stick it on the MLS. Stick a sign. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's very different. That, that basically is not really a flat fee. It is just a really cheap discount. $200 entry Stick in the MLS. MLS. Yeah. What, what we do is uh, typically when you have a real estate deal, you, you're going to do a 6% commission. 
3% traditionally goes to whoever brings the buyer. 3% traditionally goes to whoever lists that property. Right. What we do is we, we can't do anything about the 3% on the buyer side. Right. But rather than charging 3% to list, we do a flat fee that is based on the sales price of the home. And so we're typically going to save our clients anywhere from one to one and a half percent. And we do it without sacrificing service. No, we, you guys are... We, we pride ourselves on this concierge level service. Yes. That fee includes photographs, drones, video, signage, lock boxes, yeah. MLS, 300 different websites, right. multiple open houses. And that's that's one of the reasons why we've been so successful. You're growing like In such a short fire. amount of time yeah. is the flat fee listing gets us in the door, but then everything we do to back that up, closes. we deal. just knock it out of the yeah. park, yeah. Yeah, and you guys have some stellar agents working for you. You know what? We've, we're, we're about a, a year and a half in, and we've got, I think, nine agents in Madison, and we've got nine or ten in Athens. And even though they're new, we do all of our own in-house training and support. That's the one thing that, that sets us apart from the box companies, the right. big boxes. When we have an agent come on, if they're a new agent, we're going to train the hell out of them. Right. And we're going to teach them to do what we do. We're very low pressure yeah. kind of sale. And so, you know, I've got a, uh, 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 Amy Patterson is one of my new agents. She did, uh, I think three deals her first month in, oh, wow. you know, and it's just wow. training and support yeah. and right. it's all ongoing. And, oh, and here's the thing. I'm sure you guys are going to get a lot more people coming over. We've got a lot of interest because yeah. I mean, everywhere I turn, I'm mm. seeing you guys, I'm seeing it out there. I'm seeing We're a little obnoxious. On. It's okay though. It's, it's okay. marketing. It you know, is. I was yeah. taught a long time ago, you market until two things happen. They either say yes or they say leave me alone. <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah. Well, there. In my former businesses, I always went by. You know, marketing drives sales. Yes. Sales does not drive marketing. No. So the more you market, yes. the easier it is to sell. Right. And that's what we do. So talking about working with an agency like you guys, your brokerage or the flat fee, that actually mm -hmm. is very beneficial to an investor mm -hmm. because, like you said, they're saving one to one and a half percent typically on the resale on the listing on yeah. the listing of the resale. So that if, if somebody's looking at a deal and it's tight, and let's say it's two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, well one and a half percent that you're talking three grand. Yeah. You're talking yeah. three grand. So if they were like if their bud or if their minimum is a ten thousand dollar profit and they're looking at a deal that's only giving them eight, if they go to a brokerage like you guys, well it gives them the bump they need to get the deal done. Yeah, it, it does. And and we work with with all kinds of investors on all levels. And what we try to do is we, we can customize our service based on the client and the relationship we have that client. Or even volume. Or even volume. volume. If yeah. I've got a, uh, an investor client that we've done 10 deals with, yeah. They're going to get a buddy deal. I mean, it's just and, the way the world I think works. That's how it should work. I agree totally. But yeah. you know, the big boxes, as I'll say, they don't do it. They that don't way. do it that way. No. Mm -mm. Here's the other thing. Not only I think what you guys are doing amazing as a flat fee brokerage, but you're helping the community grow too because the money homeowners are saving on mm -hmm. a sale, they could pay off debt or have more money down mm -hmm. on another property or put a kid through school. Well, maybe not put them through school, but they pay <laughs> for a couple of months. Right. Like <laughs> help get them going. Yeah. So there's yeah. like this whole give back aspect mm -hmm. of that. Type there of there really is. And a lot of that has to do with our founder, Zach Walker, who is from from Athens. He's a very hometown conscientious kind of guy. And he yeah. started the company uh, as a way of giving back to his clients. Awesome. And, um, you know, what what we try to do is we we put our clients first, yeah. we put our agents second, and then we'll put the brokerage third. Oh, wow. And that's the that's the way we do things, and it's working out very and well for us. That's why you're growing so fast. That's so why I, I so, believe so. Yeah. So let me ask you this: mm -hmm. if an investor, um, if an investor, oh, what's going on here? Oh, there we go. Uh, if an investor that's watching this right now, I know they don't live here, or I drive them all to your brokerage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we have an, anybody who's watching this that's an investor, or maybe they just got their real estate license, and they were looking to go hang their license, what should they be looking for in a brokerage? It, it really depends on what they're going to do with that license. Are they, did they get their license? Like, like my daughter, Chelsea, you mentioned yeah. Chelsea, got her license because she was tired of paying commissions. Right because she was doing so many deals. So she is a, 
kind of a part-time realtor, but she's a full-time flipper investor, right? right? right. Uh, but she still represents other people, but not on her deals. Correct. So if you're getting your license because you truly want to buy and sell real estate, that's a completely different approach than if you're getting your license because you want to save yourself money. Right. The one thing you need to find out is if you have your own deal and you go to the big box or you go to whatever brokerage, what's their cut of your deal going to be? True. Because a lot of them, even though you might go out and find the house, work the deal, do everything, they still want a, a nice slice of your pie. I heard one tell me the other day that when you're first starting out, they want almost 70% of you're, your money. Yes, you're good to walk away with 30%. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. it's an interesting business model. Jeez. But it's it's kind of a, we, we call it sweatshop realty. Yeah. You go in there for a couple of years, you pay your dues, you don't make any money. Right. But at the end of a couple of years, I mean, you're a pretty seasoned agent. Right. But you basically starve for, for it. And we don't years. we don't think it has to be that way. Yeah, I don't. It, that's a model that does not seem to work very well yeah. for me neither. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think the, the answer to your question is it it depends on what your purpose is for getting your license. But you need to clarify with that broker. If I if I, if this is my property, my deal, my buyer, my seller, what do you get? Right. Well, a lot of times think? they're still going to have the, the big chunk. Yeah. It just doesn't seem fair, but who says life's supposed nothing to be fair, fair in real right. estate? Yeah. Yeah, to, nothing. Who says it's all supposed <laughs> to be fair? So, well, listen, Tim, I appreciate you being here. I hey, don't man, know um, how many people are in this local area or how many people are looking to come down here to buy real estate, but if they are, what's a good starting point for them to find you? Uh, I am all over the web. You can go to revolved.com is our website. Uh, go to Facebook, search for Tim Knox Revolved, and I am everywhere. Also on YouTube. We've got a couple of hundred uh, training videos and real estate videos awesome. on YouTube. Revolved Realty, no, Revolved.com, right? Revolved.com. Revolved.com, and you can find him on Facebook at Tim Knox. Yep. So, Tim, thanks again for being here. Yeah, man. buddy. Anytime. Appreciate it. You've been listening to the Real Estate Investing Talk Show. I'm Zach Childress, and I'm on a mission to create 10,000 real estate bosses over the next year. Will you be one of them? Head over to my website, reisuccessacademy.com forward slash web class and register for my free web class where you'll discover how to escape from the nine to five grind and become your own boss in real estate. See you there.